Welcome to uh, a funky Friday at five. Um, this is one with the guest, Alexander Carter, who is not here yet, I don't think, unless um, sometimes these things happen, you know, they, um, people, um, technical difficulties and, uh, of all sorts can happen. And that's in the nature of these new mediums. Um, so I'm going to, what I'm going to do is talk. Should I play the piano or talk? I think I'm sitting in this chair, so I'm going to talk. So um, we're going to discuss the film, The Lost Daughter. Hopefully. I'm going to discuss it now. So um, I like to choose my words very carefully, precisely even, a little bit. Um, a little bit nitpicky, a little bit precious, maybe, maybe pretentious. I don't know. I can only be myself, but I, I, I like, you know, what I would say, I want to say a couple say things, a couple about that is that um, you choosing words, like when I'm writing a sentence or writing a paragraph, I'm careful about what words I choose, of course. But I also try to be careful in my speech, and there's a there's a a lot of reasons for that. So a couple of reasons off the top of my head about why I would edit myself as I speak or why I would choose words carefully is that uh, the English language is beautiful, I think, and you know that's the first thing I would say. And so since the English language has a kind of for all of its flaws and all of its vices and all of its um, um, slippery historical discontinuity because people change words and communities invent new words. And hello, I see. There you are. You're here. Can you see me? Yeah, I can see you. I was just talking about my feeling about the English language and how it's. Um, I was, I've explained that when I talk, I choose my words very carefully and I pause a lot. And I feel bad because sometimes I might irritate an interlocutor like yourself or might get impatient, right? But the reason why I do that is because I wanna choose the right word and because I think the English language is really beautiful. And I'd rather err on the side of caution <laughs> and trying to pick a better word than just a babble. That's just my preferred style. What do you think about that? I don't know. I like that a lot. I, um, think, I think it's a great style. So I'm going to introduce you. We're, we are blessed for this Funky Friday at Five with the great Alexandra Carter, who is a painter and an artist. And I am excited about this stream because I am in love with this movie again. Are you there? Yeah. I'm, yeah in, love with this, I'm in love with this movie again. Did you watch it a third time? I did. I did too. When did you watch it last night? Or um, I watched it like throughout the past three nights. Okay. Kind of bits and pieces. Um, how do you want to proceed talking about this movie? What are your ideas about it? Or, well, let me let me let me let me introduce you. So you're a painter, and we're going to discuss the lost daughter. So we talked about the deuce a lot, didn't we? Mm hmm. So the deuce is, among other things, is about someone named Candida Royale, right? Who was an adult film star. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I don't know, it's been a really long time since I've seen it, but. Um, well, I only, I only mentioned that because, um, well, for a number of reasons. I was in contact with Candy Royale before she died, like very close to the time of her death. And I was emailing, I was mailing her on Facebook. And I sent her a direct message about her film, her documentary about her finding her mother. Do you know this film? So, and I was basically unveiling my warts and all that I watched her films on VHS tapes in the 90s and I was a fan. And then I wanted to be part of the Kickstarter for that film, which I ended up being, helping them make that film. And this was before the deuce, right? This was long before that project had been a thing. And I think one of the last messages that 
she was saying after well, one of them was to me and saying that she would like talking with me and and everything and interesting so that's kind of my candy to where I, I don't know the only reason why this connects is maggie gyllenhaal plays a version of her in the deuce right yeah yeah that's really interesting too just in like the aspect <laughs> that her film was in her finding her mother and then here's this film we're talking about the lost daughter so yeah. that's an interesting little um, it is, because her because but that film is um you know, that's a documentary uh, about an industry that people have a lot of complicated emotions about, right? And a lot of, and so that's a whole other discussion, but but I, I sort of feel like um, people have a lot of complicated emotions about mothering and motherhood. And yeah, I think that, that's yeah. like where this where this movie really hits home for a lot of people. And I even, I had my postpartum support group meeting this morning. Uh, this morning. And yeah, yeah, it's we meet every Friday and um you know, I even brought it up with them again and I think that you know, it's really interesting to hear um like film analysts and intellectual conversations around this movie, but it's also interesting to hear other mothers and how how it strikes a chord uh -huh. with them. Do you want to talk more about that before we talk about the film? Or? Um, I could, or I don't know if you wanted to structure this in any, any certain way. It's up to you. Well, I want to talk about all these aspects. So what comes to your mind that the women were saying about, about the film or, or whatever? So what are they, what are the kinds of things they felt about it? They... Well, like, um, one woman was saying, you know, it made her husband kind of understand more of like her internal feelings. And then I was just talking to my, um, my sister-in-law who her initial reaction was very negative actually because oh, yeah. that's right stirs up a lot of um it stirs up a lot in mothers i think because oh. it's it speaks very honestly about some of the feelings that you might have as a mother some of the more selfish or like I, personal identity feelings and I don't really like using the word selfish but I think it's it's um it's used in the movie so that's kind of why I use that word um and you know that thought for a second because there's a couple of moments when the main character Lita uses the word selfish yeah she does and, it, and she uses it twice and then she says we're mean people to her newfound buddy Ed Harris right I want to get that I want to put a, a, a pin in that because that's a deep because this is a deep film and the film deals with issues of what kind of person are you and selfishness. And then of course we'll get there, but I just wanted to remind myself or I didn't mean to interrupt, but go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. I, no, uh, I, I think uh, eventually she, my sister-in-law like recognized like, Oh, I think she's kind of just, she's a character that's expressing like some of the internal thoughts that we have as mothers. And I was like agreeing, I was like, you know, it's more of like a hyperbolic character, right? And it's, oh, it's an exaggeration it of some of those feelings you might have, but you never act on as a mother, but mm -hmm. the, they, that they're there. And it's like mm -hmm. this movie that really, um, it is a, a really good demonstration of the idea of maternal ambivalence, right? Mm -hmm like this, the mixed feelings that you have as a mother. It's rarely done in films. Rarely, yeah, that's so rarely true. Done. I mean, I, I may be in, in misreading this a little bit. I just take the film to be partly realistic. So in other words, I think Lead is a real person. Mm -hmm. And actually really is going on holiday. So there's things that I found my presume are just kind of real. Although you could read it. So there's a way to read the film allegory. So, so you know, let's jump to the, the first thing is she falls dead on the speech is the first image we see. And at the end of the film, Nina stabs her in the, in the stomach and said, watch your back, bitch. That's like one of the last lines in the film, really sinister, almost like this force of evil. Watch your back was like, we're watching you. Through the first part of the film, she's been watching them. But what's interesting is she says, watch your back, but it, her back is not what's in trouble. It's her front. So I'm showing you, I'm going to, I'm going to come attack you with this instrument because I'm so mad at you. And it's her front that's in trouble. So it's like, God, you feel bad for this woman. It's like her back's in trouble too. Like someone attacks her from the front and said, watch your back. And um, 
it's weird. It's like, is, is that supposed to represent the world or the fallenness of the world or sort of fallenness or sort of the, see, see, I actually really like this character. I don't think she's all that bad. Do you know what I mean, Lita? Like, I mean, I understand that she's I, I flawed. Do I do too. I agree. And I think a yeah. lot of people can see her as bad, but like a lot, I think a lot of people, like she recognizes, like her, one of her lines is, I'm an unnatural mother. So there's that part, wow. you know, when she, yeah. it, that she left her kids for three years. I think that's, that's the thing, you know, that we were talking about earlier about, that was like the, the kind of kill the dog scene or the, the right. kind of thing that will turn a lot of people off to this character. Um, Alex, can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. Isn't there a big difference between somebody having a crisis psychologically and leaving their kids for three years? And that's not good. I, I admit that's far from ideal. Isn't that a big difference between that and somebody like permanently leaving their kids or doing it under other kinds of circumstances? Absolutely. Absolutely. So are people just not sensitive to these differences? In other words, it's bad, but it's there's what I'm saying is that I sort of think the character of Lita is um, has a lot of things attractive about her. She's, yeah. she's had an intellectual life. She's interested in English and She's interested in Yeats poetry and, and the swan and all. So you get this sense that this woman's had all these lives within a single life, that she's a complex character. And I sort of feel like that in this movie, we're so much in her point of view with the camera and her memories that you sort of have to, in a way, like her. Not have to, but you sort of have compassion for her. Absolutely. And so it's very odd to me that someone would experience the film differently. That's all I'm saying because of how the film... Do you think it's because people don't pick up on what the film is doing or they don't meet it halfway, that kind of thing? Or they're sort of explain, what do you think that is? Is it, are we the weird I ones? Or fear of those, of the, that exists. Cause everybody has a mother right. and um, nobody wants their mom to feel that way about them. You know, that they're a burden, they're, that they're a crushing responsibility. Right. But that's just the nature of- you know, I, I, Wait, we see so many scenes of her being like a mother. And like, mm -hmm. and physically like loving them, right? What yeah. I'm saying is there's so much in the film. And so you have our work as viewers, right? Is sort of to make something out of all that. We also see her masturbating too. And like being interrupted while she's masturbating, right? Mm -hmm. Just kind of amazing. And and then the kids come in and they, and, but the thing of it is, it's like, So I think, so the film is about many things. And I, I again, I'm going to stop speaking, but I want to get this off my chest. The film is about many things, but I think one of the things the film might be about, even though I'm, I don't know if people conceptualize, it's about the nature of life itself or the nature of being a person in the world who is a parent. Mm -hmm. The fact that a parent is also a human, as well as being a parent and has many things and has fantasies and is just a person, right? Right. I think that one of the things the film is about is what a person is or how to honor that in its completeness. What do you think about that? Is yeah, I think it also, it, in that sense, it draws attention to the things that we don't usually draw attention to or, or that we usually smooth yeah. over. Like a mother is a mother and that's the whole identity, but actually right. she has a sexual identity. She yeah. has a career driven or creative identity. Right, um, yeah. She has all these other, she has an identity as a daughter herself, like, which is actually separate from her mothering identity, right. you know? So I think, um, I think those are kind of, especially the sexuality aspect is very taboo in terms of like pairing, pairing um, a sexual act with the, with the, you know, the portrait it's of the mother. But of course, as you know, as a person living in the world, you know, you have to have a sex life as well as being a parent. And it happens, has to unfortunately, or unfortunately happen under the same roof, right? So exactly. what, what I'm saying is that The Lost Daughter, whatever else it is, is a movie about aspects of daily life. Mm -hmm. Third, it, it, but it's comprehensively about that, like it goes there. And I sort of feel like thankful to the film that it did that. What I'm saying is that's, that's such a, Right? Isn't that your excitement about the film that it actually? 
I sort of feel like the film is a gift in a way, in a weird sort of way, because it does that. As, straight, as corny as that may sound to put it that way, is that your feeling or kind of it's like, wow, you know? Absolutely. Um, and I feel like, you know, I, I listened to this interview with Maggie Gyllenhaal the other day where um, part of her, what one of the things she said that resonated so much was that mother mothering is like the biggest thing she's ever done. And like that mm -hmm. it's, it's been the most intense, the most challenging, the most wonderful. And to simplify that the way that a lot of images and storytelling of motherhood has been simplified, oh, yeah. just doesn't encapsulate that experience enough. And so that's what this movie does is it, it does a much better job at showing all the facets or yeah. many different facets of, of that identity. Yeah, it's, it's remarkable. Mm -hmm. And I sort of think it does it in a way, but that's one part of the movie. But as you point out, there's this other dimension in the movie about this weird family that she encounters and their strangeness, right? Or their, what's the word, unsavory or sinister aspects, right? And, it, and it's, um, let's talk, do you want to go there? Or is that, well, I think we've gone. So do you want to say anything more about your, your, your group where you meet or what the different comments pe women made or is that? Um, well, yeah, I do. Cause I remember like right when it came out on Netflix, we immediately talked about it the week afterwards. Like that's how, mm -hmm. how powerful it is, I think is like that we needed to kind of like say, Whoa, have you guys seen this? And you yeah. know, what, what did you think of it? And, um, because I think it is so raw and it's not yeah. like, like even I, I just asked my mom about it. Do you remember? Cause I asked her to watch it after I watched it and she was like, I found it really sad and depressing. I don't really mm. remember much else, but that's like also my mom, right? She, she likes happy movies, but. Um, I mean, to be fair, there is a dark aspect of the film because this, this younger, hotter mother, right. Relatively speaking, Dakota Johnson they, they bond and you think maybe they're going to have overcome their differences and bond. Right. Right. And yet that's ruined because she stabs her and kills. So there is that that's depressing, right. As this thing happens and she yeah, attacks absolutely. The, yes. question is, the question is, why does that happen? Why does she do that? Right. And then who is she? Right. So we'd have to talk about who she is and what's. So well, I mean, she kind of acts out what, uh, we as the audience are feeling too as well, right? That's because right. because it's so right. frustrating to see Lita take this doll for no oh, reason. Yeah. No, like it's like well, there's a right? reason, right? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But she even says she doesn't know what the reason. I don't know. Yeah. See, that's what this movie is about. I feel like the lost daughter is kind of about being human and our flaws. It's actually the movie's raising questions about what do we do with our flaws. How do we understand our flaws as people? Mm -hmm. It's almost like Maggie Gyllenhaal wants us to sort of do do something with that. Am I right? There's almost like a, that's why I think it's, um, see, I don't see the movie as depressing. I see it as compassionate. It's actually a very, do you know what I mean? There's actually a lot of love in the film. Yeah. In the film. And I just wish people picked up on that more, you know, when they watched it, you know, but of course I'm a fan of the movie and you are. But, right. It's kind of like, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I, I honestly, I can't, um, I can't speak well to those who aren't fans of the movie, but <laughs> I can understand some of the complaints. Like there, there are, yeah. Like one of the things that I've heard thrown around is just like kind of the, the messiness of like the ending and like, did she die or not? I mean, she was stabbed and all this stuff, but um, for me, I think, and I don't know, I actually don't know how I feel about the ending and what I think happened. But I think what, what strikes me so much about the movie is the meat of it mm -hmm. and how much it spoke, it speaks to like so, yeah, so many different experiences. And then also uh, the performances. And I don't really like wasting time talking about execution of film because of, the, of actors but i have to say with this movie like it's just like especially after having watched it multiple times yeah. you can pick up on 
Jesse choices that the actors make. Oh, well, well, Jesse, right? Jesse, um, Jesse Buckley. Jesse yeah. Buckley, who Charlie Kaufman, right? Did you see that film she did? Of Charlie no. Kaufman? You're gonna watch it now, though, right? It's a two character. You have to be a Charlie Kaufman fan, though, but, but it's really her film in a sense, right? Okay, so, all right. I'll, I'll I recommend that. Um, my list. Amazing. amazing. But uh, that was the same year. But, but, but you seen Beast? Beast? That's Beast. B E A S T. I have to see that, right? Very, very interesting performance in that movie. Yeah. Um, but what I was going to say is all the acting is incredible. Her, Olivia Coleman, Ed Harris. Scar, Peter's, um, Scar's guard. Um, yeah. It's just, yeah. And also Dagmara. Um, I don't know yeah. her last name, but she played the pregnant woman. She was fantastic. Yeah, um, yeah Dakota Johnson. Dakota was Johnson is just, um, that's a performance, right? Yeah, like nothing is overacted, which I really appreciate. Yet they hit, they hit the tones hit the tone. well of, well, you know, I, 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 so when I'm watching this film, I'm a 54-year-old guy and I'm watching this movie. And I'm feeling like this is kind of weird because I don't have much in common with this woman on paper. But I feel like this movie made me feel like I was kind of like this character. I'm like, wow, I have something in common with this person. Yeah, that's really interesting to me because that's what kind of my first question for you was, was like, yeah, what 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 were your immediate takeaways and how did you how did you well, come to I could have had this woman's life in a sense because I almost went into academia. Like it was music or philosophy. So I could have done that thing of writing papers, right? On so there's that that's that would have been that world of faculty meetings and all that. Mm -hmm. So there's that coming out. Because I almost wanted to do that. Right. Yeah, and that is a very strong vein in the film, right? It's very yeah. like in terms yeah. of aura of her life it's very um and her career you know academics are usually very passionate about what they do so it, it, it pervades their whole life right that's right i really like that right. about her character especially right. as a artist too it's the same you know but also i feel like my daily life is like her on that holiday watching people because i've always been an outsider in every situation i've been in like her mm watching people and so yeah isn't that interesting although i think i might be a little bit nicer than her i might move i don't know it depends on how i feel about the family <laughs> i don't know <laughs> well, yeah. about what she does there i'm not gonna move this is my spot right like yeah yeah i don't think i can do that i'm more of a pushover than that <laughs> that was a great mo mo moment though yeah what do you think Dakota Johnson, does she represent something in society? Like, is that family, do they represent, do they, re is it going to sound too sort of? You know, this is something funny that my brother just said, because, I, yeah, I was just talking to them. Yeah. And um, he's, he, because he was saying, you know, maybe the mobsters are her children. Because remember, like, that's a whole other um thing that happens is she seems constantly kind of antagonized by right. the, the kids or the um right, right. I don't know whether they were local Greek um guys or whether they were part of the mobster family but she, remember when she goes to the movies and like that is a nightmare for me right because I'm the person that loves movies right I don't want a bunch of right hey oh Especially the movie you love you know it's like, awful. Yeah. awful but but do they represent society? They do, right? So I think what it's, and it could be what Ferrara is saying, it could be the writer, I don't know, or Gyllenhaal, they're saying that there's something about society's laws that are oppressive, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but absolutely. That's a given, but it's kind of interesting to make that represented by organized crime, right? It'd be one thing if they were like regular, boring, conventional people, like, an insurance salesman and his wife and their kids mm -hmm. but to make the mafia is really kind of pointed, right? It's sort of like here, it's almost like the film is saying, you know, we need to reckon with that, but just, right. It's almost like, right. It's yeah. Like, wow, yeah. Well, and it also plays with the, um, the kind of relationship of uh, her own, 
her field, right, is in Italian comparative literature. And wow. Italy is like the the home of the mafia, right? So there's that that um, kind of conflict there of interest, sure. which is interesting. I mean, yeah, it's just, I don't know. I mean, do you look at it as an unreal situation where it's sort of, um, that it is all allegory? Could you look at it that way? It's non-naturalistic? I mean, it's like a ballet or... Um, I mean, I don't look at the film that way, but could you? I mean, you could. I think you could. And what would the film look like? It would be like Queen Master, right? Matthew Barney. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But wouldn't it be weird? So that means Lita represents a, some kind of female principle. Dakota Johnson, like a very traditional. Dakota Johnson is like the hot 20 something that people want. She has a husband and she has a, has a boyfriend, right? My baby wants to say hi really quickly. Come on, come on in. Are we going to do it? Let's do it. Yes. Yes. This is an epic, epic moment. I don't know. I don't know why my husband, I guess. Uh, he, she's totally oh. naked, but. Hello. Oh, this is amazing. <laughs> what a beautiful. My lost daughter. <laughs> no. She's been found. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think about that? About How are you doing today? Good? Yeah, she's good. Do I say high five or what do I do? I don't know what to do. I don't think this is kind hi, of. Hi, cool. Sherby. Say hi. What are you doing? She doesn't know how to say anything yet. Can you say mama? Mama. Sometimes she says mom. Wow. But yeah. Um, her wow. dad's probably going to come get her. Very That's beautiful. <laughs> Is your dad going to say hi and, and, and chime in on the lost daughter? Yeah, maybe. You want him to? Do you want? I don't know. I kind of like to open up things a little bit. People yeah, absolutely. I, and you know, oh, I mean, What's so interesting to me when I think about my personal relationship with this movie is that I literally, when I first found out about it and watched it, mm -hmm. was on the flight home from, basically I, I had been at this artist residency in Finland for two yeah. months where I had like, where she was there with me, right. mother was there with me, okay. mother was taking care of my daughter. So I had all of this and I had so much support from the organization. I had so much um, I felt so valid in my career again after, you know, not, you know, after being more subsumed with motherhood. Mm -hmm. So watching that movie at that moment was just so powerful because there I was kind of leaving that safe career haven that I was in where I was so supported and, and returning home where it was going to be just me and her again. And I, I have to kind of, um, uh, find ways to to work and take care of her and so those scenes when um jesse buckley was uh you know listening to her translations in her earphones yeah. and um meanwhile her kids are crying in the background and her husband's tapping her to go take care of them like yeah. it was so so real to me all of a sudden and you know what i want to say about that yeah, go That's ahead. That's actually what the movie is saying. The movie is celebrating that. That's what it is to be human. That's our life. Yeah. All of us. Even if we don't have a baby. You're bringing your 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 baby into the stream. Right? Yeah, you mean like kind of like the film. This is like the theme of my podcast. Like I think the quotidian is everything. Literally everything. And I think that all human evil stems from trying to trying to run from the quotidian. Mm. I know that sounds very pretentious, but I do think that we we when we try to flee from our daily life, that's when we get into trouble. Yeah. You know? so sort I of like yeah, I really like what you're saying that like it, it speaks to everybody, not just parents, because we're all doing this. Like we're all managing our time. We're all right. different identities. Yeah. So um, you know, having the baby just threw another, 
you know, ball into the game. So yeah. I think that is so beautiful though. Thank you. Yeah. She's so is, your, is your baby going to be a different kind of a, a child and an adult because they're growing up around pain and canvases? This is significant, right? It's kind of like, yeah. don't you think? I think so. I think the Can like. I show you something? Are you a fan of Richard Merkin? Do you know his work? No, I don't. I have an original in Richard Merkin. See that painting there? Oh, cool. That's Bobby Shore and Cole Porter. That's a, his painting of the Cotton Club with Josephine Baker. He signed it. That's awesome. To me, yeah, it's awesome. So that's kind of a different kind of, yeah. And I also, he signed this New Yorker cover he did to me. Look at that. Oh, that's awesome. That's very much like my style, right? 20s and 30s, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. But the use of color is similar to you in a way, right? So there's kind of like a little bit. Yeah, very vivid. Very, it's very vivid. So you're bringing that back as vivid color, right? Yeah. Cool. Not that it ever went anywhere, but I'm just saying you're kind of saying here. Yeah, well, especially in kind of like speaking about the body and like the mm -hmm. internal sure. kind of um, landscape. It's I think it's more and and my use of cranberries too. You know, cranberry mm -hmm. is. Um, I got one more thing to show you. Hold on. Yes. I know the glare is a problem, but look at that. Oh, cool. That's Stephen Trepanides from the early 70s. Is it, is it watercolor or oil? Do you know? I don't know the medium, but I know it's Trepanides. And it was mm -hmm. unfinished and it never signed. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Cool. And it was like unfinished because, um, well, he was dating. So I was friends of somebody he had dated 40 years ago and they didn't want this pain anymore so i came into this crazy right this trip in you yeah right? you taught at the museum school i think oh, so cool. it's really weird it's like i was really good friends with a student of phil augustine yeah, yeah, yeah. Broder, and i almost came into an original phil augustine but you know because so, so so what i'm saying is that in my life i've always been hanging out with painters right and, and illustrators is because I can't draw for anything. I can only play the piano, you know? So only I can, play the piano. I can only play the piano. So I'm kind of envious of people that understand, you know, paint, right? It's kind of to me. Oh, one of my questions for you about the movie actually was about the music since you are, you know, a composer and whatnot. It's like, a good score, yeah. Good yeah, score. well, I don't know. It, like, it really put me off at first. Because I was so enraptured by the content of the movie, but the music was so, it was jazzy, you know, it was kind of like casual. I don't know, what I, what is that music? Well, it's, it's. are you talking about the songs for the, because there are actually people saying songs, there's a lot of songs in the movie. Really? No, I'm talking yeah, about the, the, not talking about the actual songs, like the Nina Simone or the different. Oh yeah, 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 the the Nina Simone. You're talking about the actual score. Yeah, I'm talking about the score. Do you want me to compose a music for your baby right now on the spot? Sure. Yeah, let's do it. What do you think they what do you think that they would wanna what do you think? Something um I mean we just right. I, don't I don't I don't know. What do you think? Um just whatever happens, right? Mm-hmm.
Yay! Wow. I don't know if that captured anything about about. What do you think? She loves that. That was you interesting. Of her in that. Yeah, there you go. Oh, look at that. Clap it. What kinds of things does she know how to do? She can. She can cry, and she can. What is she doing now? Um. Well, she likes opening everything up and spreading. Okay around and, right. um in my studio she likes looking at all my images uh -huh. have, um i can show you oh wow all the images i have on the wall oh, wow. um so is this where you work in here it's so great yeah. yeah this is where i work mostly i work on the floor which is why my that's floor right floor, that's right right and then i have this table over here Oh, huh. um, and then I've got my desk where I do all my computer work. Yeah, and yeah, it was uh, it was really oh, yeah. good. She's starting to talk now. She's starting to say something. Yeah. Sure. Now, what is that that she's doing? She's I doing know. this finger in her ear. What is this kind of thing? Is yeah, this, I don't know. What does that mean? How you doing? <laughs> How you doing? What is that? She loves I tried to have music to, to mellow, kind of mellow. I didn't know what to play. That's totally improvised. You know, I didn't plan any of that. I just yeah, that was it. lovely. She yeah. loved it. She even, I think it's the first time she's ever seen someone playing an instrument, you know? So she, oh, she really? Doing, yeah, she started doing this. Uh, oh. Like maybe, oh. yeah, I don't know if it was because she really saw your hands, but. I don't know. That would make sense. <laughs> That's beautiful. Yeah. What do you think about the long journey you've been through, all this stuff you've gone through over the year, past years? Yeah. yeah. Uh, her. Isn't that remarkable? It sure is. What do you think about that? Isn't that something? What is yeah, that? amazing. And, and it, you know, it almost makes it, especially, it like kind of come back to the, to the themes in the film. Yeah. It makes me even more... Um, because part of me is like this infertility patient, right? Who uh, I would have given anything to have a baby and I should be so, I should be so grateful. And I am, I absolutely am. And I, and I think that my actual journey within motherhood has been extremely joyful. And I've had a very wonderful baby who sleeps and all this stuff. But um, getting there was so hard. And so to to talk about this movie, I almost feel a little bit guilty to my like fellow infertility warriors because I know the feeling when you're in the infertility world is just so intense and you can't listen to people complain about motherhood because you want it so badly. Right. I'm so jealous. Does that, does that mean we shouldn't be covering this picture? Yeah. <laughs> Wrong choice. <laughs> no, no, we should definitely be covering it though because it's so, it's so real, it's so honest, and it's yeah. so, um, it's not like it, it's not like it complains about motherhood. It just, it, it paints a full portrait of it. Oh, that's the thing I'm trying to explain. That's the movie. That's yeah. why I think the movie is kind of realistic in a weird. So even though there is this. It has an imaginary feeling of going back in time and all the scenes, which is really beautiful, by the way, how the film goes in and out of the past is extraordinary. Yeah. That, it was, the picture of the film is so incredible. And yeah. I think, yeah, but that's a whole, that's its own subject, but I'm saying it's, um, yeah. But I feel like it's complete. Yeah, it was interesting on re-watching it, how I, I remember the movie in a different chronology. Yeah. But 
right. That's right. Like I, I didn't think that certain parts happened yeah. when they did. Yeah. Um, but is it lunchtime? Does Daddy need to come? Uh, Hold on one second. I'm gonna take care of for lunch. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay here and. and uh, Eddie. Laurie, our producer is here. Do you have anything to say, Laurie, about anything? Um, we're going to. All right. There she goes. How's her dad doing? Good. He's having lunch with her as well. What kind of things is he going to eat? Or what kind, what is it? What is it? Um, I don't know. A lot of sardines. Sherby eats a lot of sardines. It's like the best kind of like brain food. Brain food. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Um, avocados. Um, so I want to come back to that thing. Watch your back. There's something sinister about it. Yeah, and actually, I hadn't really thought about the words until you just brought it up now. And it's, it's almost almost like she's a almost like she's um. It's like she's threatening her, but there's some message there. Is that like what is that about? Is that the law coming down, or is that like is she rep who is who is that person? That's so my feeling my feeling is that she's reproducing some kind of violence of her world. And presenting it to Lita, right? Mm -hmm. Like she believes in it, even though it's not hers. Do you know what I mean? It's like some kind of weird violence. It's like I'm gonna. It's like the, almost like she is a gangster. It's like something the gangster. Yeah, was. that's what like my first reaction was. Very, it's very. Oh, there's that like mobster. That mob yeah. You watch your back. We're watching you. It's almost like a sinister. Yeah, it is. There's something frightening about that. There right. is. Kind of like, and is the film saying that that's part of our world, right? Unfortunately, it's sort of like. Yeah, but I also think it kind of paints a picture of um, the protectiveness of a mother, like the kind that's of. The positive part, right. Like very um, cattiness of, right. of being the sole caretaker mm -hmm. and protector of this child and if it, so more animalistic actually that was like kind of the most animalistic moment. well there's a, there's a there's a okay this is what's really difficult there's a positive sense to that right like positively it's like don't fuck with my kid like don't be a predator right it's the positive sign i want to protect my kid mm -hmm. but there's a negative side right there's some other you know what i mean there's like something sinister yeah. the it. negative would be that her impulse is towards violence you know, it's towards right. part of another person. Um, and also, when she's like, it's almost like it's not for herself. It's like it's her tribe, right? It's like it's her brothers and all these people. Mm -hmm. So there's something kind of not, you know what I mean? It's like those macho people on the beach. It's like, I represent them. She's like, a, this is, a, it's like, these are my people. Don't, don't F with my people. Yeah. And that's, that's the thing that's not, yeah, not good. As soon as she <laughs> did that, that's exactly what I thought. I was like, oh, yeah. well, that's that's that whole family coming out. Yeah. So. Isn't that interesting? Mm hmm But, um, yeah, I think that's also, like, one of the aspects people have a hard time with in this movie is, like, this puncture wound. Yeah. And she continues to kind of, like, uh, operate like a normal person. Until she falls on the, and of course she falls. On the she street. falls, yeah. She does die in the book, right? Right. Because in the book she says, I am dead, even though I'm here talking to you. Yeah. Yeah, oh, so I'm I'm fine, even though I'm dead. I think that's how it ends. So right. what kills her? See, see, I, as you know, Alex, I should be forthcoming. I, I, I think that the world kills her. That family is the world. Hmm. I don't think she kills herself. What do you mean by the world? The injustices of the world. So in other words, it's that thing about frustration. It's sort of like, to put it really bluntly and corny, the oppressiveness of the world kind hmm. of really kills her. Right? To the degree to which the world is, in, the degree to which the world is oppressive, right? 
do you not, is that not a fair reading or is that too? Like, do you think that I see or too kind of, I mean, too, um, but that is how I see it. That's how I see it. It's almost like. A, is that in terms of like, like the societal norms and expectations? Yeah. 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 I think that that's a really good read because it's like talking about the weight of those, right? Even though she's on vacation. On vacation, then she ain't. Even like all calls are there. Yeah. She can't get away from it. Yeah, she's totally. She can't get away from it. Yeah. Just like, okay, this is the thing. I love Yeats. I even love that poem. Even though that poem is a hard poem for a lot of people, right? Because of what it's about. It's a swan raping a lump, right? Right. You know the poem, but that's a great poem. But it's like. There were, I there were, there were, I don't know huh? the poem, but I knew of obviously the, the classic Greek mythology surrounding. Yeah. What well, about the other literature in the um, in the movie? Did you know the the Crisis by Auden and yeah. stuff like that? Oh yeah, I mean, I that that was such a such a beautiful like. There's also. Well, do you want to go into? Do we need to talk about W. H. Auden because there's something to that, right? I mean, Auden. Because I set two autumn poems to music. So in 1992, I set um, Auden's World War II poetry about the, about the um, Nazis. I set two poems to music. That's one of the first poems I set. I didn't mean to get off, off topic. But. Wow, that's so yeah. cool. Yeah, so I'm not familiar with his work. I'm not very up on poetry in general, but yeah. um, I just thought that in terms of so the other aspect of the movie that we haven't really talked about, we talked about the acting, but there's like a certain sense of beauty across right. the whole thing. And in that, I mean that in terms of language, especially like, I think yeah. it's so interesting that she's a comparative literature scholar. Right. And Italian is like one of the most beautiful languages in the world. And, um, and there's that line of the poem that she teaches to her kids in Italian. And yep. when they, Say it in front of their Italian visitor, the hiker. The hikers, yeah. Like it's such a gorgeous, gorgeous moment. What do you think about those hikers? Yeah, they were really interesting, a very interesting kind of ingredient in all of this. See, uh, see, the hikers are kind of like the attempt to live some alternative mm -hmm. to this, right? When I say this, I mean... They're the ones that don't get killed by the world. Yes, but their thing isn't so great, right? It also has problems, right? Yeah. So that's what I like about this film. It's like we have the world, and the world is like the Internal Revenue Service and corporations and, right, buying coffee and, like, just the, you know, the, the structure of the world has many problems, right? Mm -hmm. But then when you have the people that try to live outside the grid of the world, they have problems too, right? There's, pro there's problems with that ethically, right? Absolutely. The film puts a spotlight on all these problems. It's like, right? That's why this binary thing of good and bad doesn't work, right? Yeah, and that's another thing that the film does. If you want to, like, talk about that. Yeah. Put it in one one sentence, it's like and, it explodes binaries. It says yeah. no to binaries. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it doesn't work. Yeah. Because these hikers have are. I mean, I, I like the hikers, but they're sort of effed up, right? They're kind of, right? Right, and he, you know, he left his family. Yep, there you go. To be doing what he was doing with this Italian woman, so. Yeah. Um, it's like, yeah. Hmm. But I thought that that was beautifully acted, too, oh, the yeah. Italian woman, and how she... Uh, she expressed such joy at yeah at yeah. Lucy Buckley's character. Yeah, and it's sort of like that could be another movie. Like you could have another movie yeah. about other people, and that's the world of Midsummer, right? Yep. Oh yeah. I mean, that's the world of the the alternative that fails, right? Miserably. That's the alternative. That's like a cult, or that's oppressive, or right. It's a Really interesting parallel, yeah. Wow. <laughs> You're trying to set up this alternative. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I love Midsummer. Well, it's it's, it's kind of like a, 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 the movie that the show The Deuce, right? Where we try to create our own. We're going to try to make our own sex movies. Mm -hmm. In this very compromised, not very good system. Right. Right. But yet she tries to do that, right? She tries to make something different. Right. Yeah, actually. But that's, but that's kind of like, right? That's what the, I'm just drawing connections between things. Like maybe these connections aren't there. I don't know. I don't know what you think, but it's kind of. There, so there's some stuff that I didn't um, pick up on that I actually, so this week I actually listened to the audiobook, um, The Lost Daughter. Excellent. Excellent. I, I did it, you know, just while I was doing chores and stuff. So I, I didn't give it like a really good read. So what, what, what did you learn? Tell me what's going on. Um, well, yeah. That was one of the aspects that was a little bit more um, extrapolated in the book was this relationship with these hikers. And because um, she was saying, so what's weird about the book, though, is everything's flipped around in terms of who's Italian and who's speaking English and who's because, you know, it's written by an Italian author. Yeah, yeah. So um, everything's different. Like she's actually Italian and she her specialty is English literature. Interesting. Right. <laughs> it's all flipped around. Um, flipped around. So she's. So you're saying in the book she's an Italian woman studying D.H. Lawrence, for example. Yeah, right? I forget. No, it was something. Henry something. James or something. Uh, right? Studying like things that are non-Italian. I wish I could remember. No, I think it was still Yates. Or actually, oh, I Yates. Well, hmm. Yates is Irish literature, so that gets caught. That gets into it, right? No, this That's, is. Oh, it is. But Yates is because Yates was Yates was an Irish nationalist. He was a rev, you know radical. Right. I can't remember yeah. what her specialty was, in, right. but it wasn't the crisis. Um, okay. But uh, yeah. Th so the one. I, mean, I understand that W. H. Auden was a communist. He was in the CP, Great Great Britain Communist Party. That was very common then, though, know, for a lot of English intellectuals to be. Right, seduced by Stalinism, or or you right, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. those, those are the poems I did at W. H. Auden. That period of like very committed. We need to fight the popular front, fight fight fascism, right? Mm -hmm. And that's that's one part of W. H. Auden. There's this whole other part of W. H. Auden that's very metaphysical and very not that at all, right? Then there's W. H. Auden, the uh, the gay man, right? There's what what there? That's a whole we could do. That's its own thing, but it's complicated, right? So, wow, yeah, yeah it's like, I really don't know much. Yeah, um, but in the book, uh, <laughs> I think her name is Brenda, the female hiker. Okay, um, is actually the one. She's the link. So remember in the movie at the end of that scene, she says, I would like to see your work sometime or I'd like to read some of your work. Right. So in the book, she actually does give her this article that she's published or this article. And that's how it eventually gets published or that's how it gets mm -hmm. seen by Hardy, the other professor. Thomas Hardy. No, oh, no. Um, Professor Hardy. Okay. Yeah. The guy, guy, Peter Skarsgård's character. Right. So in the book, it fleshed that out a little bit more right. in terms of like that's where the link was, which was right. interesting because otherwise the hikers do seem kind of like out of nowhere, right? Yeah. Um, they come and they go quite quickly. But in the book, there is a link, and that is that the, that female hiker is the one that gives – uh, Lita, young Lita, some exposure in terms of her work. Yeah. Do you think that the fact that that's left out is a, is a, makes for a different film, right? So there could have been more, that's just a choice, right? To leave out. Yeah. I mean, I think it basically leaves out some of the more detailed nitty gritty aspects of the career identity of Lita. Yeah. Um, which I think is fine given that kind of the, the greater focus of the film is from family, um, yeah. family ties. In an ideal world, right? Yeah. Matt Gyllenhaal would have a series and it would be eight, we would cover that. So that would be great, right? 
Let's yeah. See, see movie. That's the whole point of streaming. It's like follow this woman's life or follow her marriage and her and her. You know that that would be. I'd watch that, right? That would be great. That's a whole. That would be. Yeah. Exactly. Actually, yeah. since you're bringing that up, something else I wanted to ask you was, um, have you seen, I haven't watched it since it came out, but um, Little Fires Everywhere? Um, I need to watch that. Yeah, because that's another, it's another sh uh, cinematic experience. It's a series this time, not, not a film, but um, that kind of gets into the complexities of motherhood. Okay. Not nearly as nuanced at all as The Lost Daughter, but um, recommended. It's good. But it is really interesting. How many how long is it? One season or is it a I think it's technically a mini series. So yeah, it is one season. I watch it. I've been watching strange things. Like I watched the girl from Plainville with the uh, Al Fanning and which is like a YA, it's like a young adult teen. Oh. So, but it's about a, it's about assisted suicide. You heard about it, right? About that mm -hmm. girl from Massachusetts and this boy kills himself. Remember that? She was. I've been watching. That. I watched that. I watched this Mormon series, The Banner of Heaven, about the the, the fundamentalist. I mean, I watch a lot of a lot of streaming TV because I'm able to. It's like I live in a rural town, so there's not as many movie theaters here. So you get. So I try to keep up. What what have you seen that you can recommend? Or I don't know. I mean, I can. Um. Well. Uh. Recent things that I've seen and re would recommend. Um. Oh, I I did watch the Scandinavian horror. I forget. I don't think I brought it up in our last conversation. That was really good. Um. Thelma. Which was on. We we got it on our like. Canopy. Do you get can Canopy? It's like the mm -hmm. library network. Um, mm -hmm. It's great. It's free. You know, you know the show I love is The Bridge. What's that? The detective. The one about the, the detective with autism. The, the What's her name? She's a blonde. Uh, you've heard of this show. It's a detective series about solving serial killers. and. Um, mm. Yeah, it's called The Bridge. I really recommend that. It's a bit, it's a bit older now. It's an older... Um, yeah, I recommend the bridge. I forget the actress's name, but I'm she's I love her to death. She's great. That's the only thing coming from that part of the world that I've watched. That and one other, one other thing. But you know, a series that comes to mind that I really liked was um, and I don't know if it's your thing is the flight attendant hmm. with Kaylee Kuoko, and it's about a flight attendant who is an alcoholic. Okay. But it gets even more interesting. She works for the CIA. <laughs> so it's really, I know it's got, it's got Soshi Mammon in it as her best friend and, and um, Rosie Perez. Okay. And, yeah, it's a great cast, but it's a comedy. But even though it's a comedy, it's also a melodrama about sobriety and alcoholism. Because she's a flight attendant who's caught up in espionage. And it's really, I, I really like it because it's like juggling a lot of things about, you know, about yeah, it sounds good. I, I'm like looking at my list right now um, yeah. of things that, but they're mostly things I haven't seen yet. Like um, yeah. some, an artist friend just texted me saying, I need to see this movie X. Okay. Have you heard of this? Um, I have it, but I have not seen it. Yeah. I feel okay. like that could be interesting too. Kind of going back to the deuce. It's another. Oh, the X rated is about X. Like yeah. Yeah, it looks really interesting. Is it domestic? Or is uh, it international? Is it no yeah, way? it's domestic. Huh. Yeah, I feel like it takes place like in the South or something. Oh, sure. Oh, I think I've heard about this. Mm -hmm. Is it about two brothers that try to go into that industry and make or something? Maybe. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not sure, uh, but I'm waiting for it to come out on a platform. I don't think it's out. Like, well, I, I, I feel really weird recommending the flight attendant because it's a strange, I really like this series. I think there's a lot to it, but it's very idiosyncratic. It's about a flight attendant who's like trying to get sober hmm. and trying to solve international espionage with North Korea. And um, just describing it to you that way, it sounds like almost too silly. 
Yeah. yeah. But, it, but it works. It actually it works. Absurd in a way. Yeah. Absurd. Yeah. Uh, um, all right. Well, I'm putting it on my list. I yeah. really want to see Robert Eggers' new movie, The Northman. Mm -hmm. um, what about the new Alex Garland? Are you a fan of his? Did you like Ex Machina? There's a lot of... There's a lot of yeah, I did. I did. And I only just watched the trailer for the new one. Um, after seeing... Like, I saw an article that was complaining about it being way too heavy-handed in its metaphors and stuff. But... but this I, is not about Ex Machina. Yeah. So it that's really just, just his style. Just his, no, he's great. He has his own style. Yeah. That's what he does. It's like, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm looking forward to seeing it. Look at your baby. Yeah. This is so remarkable. <laughs> See, she's looking around. She loves looking. So do you think that uh, your baby is going to have a talent for drawing? And Is that too corny a question? Or um, yeah. I mean, I think she'll definitely have like a, a good impulse for it. The thing is, I think all of us are born with like such huge creative impulse. And we basically have to turn it off at some point to, to do other things. And so at least she'll see someone that never turned it off. You know, I think that, that that's the thing is like, um, I think, you know, people do this themselves a disservice when they're like, oh, I can only draw stick figures or whatever. It's not what it's about. Like, I think there's just everyone has a an impulse to or a need to make things. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and, and so to have I, a way I put my thing into making music and sound right. and writing sentences and i feel like that's enough for me i feel like because of the, i do that i don't do you know drawing or so I, maybe are you saying it's all the same thing it has to go yeah somewhere. well but that's what i'm saying it's all oh, the same yeah. thing you just find your thing that yeah. that fit, feeds that need and right. that makes it um look at look at her beautiful yeah yeah did you have a good lunch we talk about our astrology Oh boy, I know nothing about astrology. No, what's her birthday? It's important. We, we um, it's that. the 25th of April. <laughs> okay. So she's a Taurus, right? I'm going to look it up now. I should have it memorized, but I don't. <laughs> um, are you going to do her birth chart? No. Is it because you don't believe in it? or? Um. Yeah, and well, no, it's not that I don't believe it. It just I I'm I've never been I've never been into it. And then as soon as I met my husband and, and I hear how he stops, very stops and anyone here even mentions the word astrology. Not allowed to mention it. Um, like, and I, I, I would love to see a chart, a she or birth chart, because I do think there's something to it. Really, I do. I I so in that sense, I believe in it. Do I also believe in science? Yeah, I believe in, a, you know, in, in physics and evolution. Words, it isn't like either or. Right? Right. It's, all, it's all in this, you know, but I think, April, you know, I, my rising sign is Taurus. So Taurus is part of me, you know. Mm -hmm. Very practical, right? I don't know. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to offend anybody. I don't want to. I'm not trying to. Push, <laughs> I'm not trying to push astrology, but you know I'm into this stuff, right? Because we did that show, and I talked about the moon and you know and all that. Right. Yeah, I'm into that stuff. Okay. Yeah, and it's it's a trend. It's a trendy thing to be in. I I know it's that's not why you're into it, but it's, it definitely seems to be more and more talked about, and especially actually in my interest in my own work in witchcraft. Yeah. And, and kind of sorcery and like the history of imagery of those things it definitely doesn't like i'm 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 not steering clear of astrology and by doing that you know i, I come across so much so um what a beautiful child <laughs> i don't know much about babies or children you know you're like an expert isn't it I know you are an expert. Look, you got the, you're doing it right there. So I'm going to ask you a practical question. How many months old is she? She's almost 13 months. 13 months. So what is a 13-month-old baby thinking about? Do you know? Like what is going on? 
That's a good question. Like, was something? Yeah, I have no idea. But like, I think at this yeah. point, so I think usually babies are walking at this point. She's not walking yet. I think it's fine. Is she um, supposed to be? What? Is she supposed to be walking or crawling or? I think it's like by 18 months, they're supposed to be walking, but she's crawling and she's like, she stands up all the time. Um, but you, yeah, what's interesting is like you really and really frustrating at this point is that you have no idea what they want and they can't tell you. And before that was fine. because She didn't really seem to get upset. That Isn't often. she telling you by making these noises? Yeah, she wants to get down. Do you want to go? Well, then you know. Yeah. There you go. Bye. No, it's too simple. Too simple. Um, Chester. Laurie, do you want Laurie? Is she like Chester? <laughs> do you want to get out? Is she like Chester, Laurie? What do you think? I think Laurie's busy, but I don't know. Ch Chester is Laurie's dog, golden retriever. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, I mean, with dogs, obviously they're nonverbal their whole lives. So it's just, it's just frustrating because it's like, I know eventually she'll be able to tell me what she needs. And uh, mm -hmm. I just can't wait for that to happen. Uh, yeah. But I do feel like there is like a intuitive mother. There's a mother's intuition that's very powerful. Yeah. Which, um, well, to get back to the film, I sort of feel like that this Skarsgård character, this sort of high status academic professor who's very arrogant, right? He's kind of like an alpha male and very arrogant. Yeah, totally. And you, we, I don't like that about him. That irritates me. Yeah, that kind of irritated me too. Like he thinks he's such hot shit. He thinks he's a hot shit. He's just, but the, here's the thing. What he's doing is really valuable. Like the part of what I love is the poetry part. The, that part interests me. But, you know, all that other shit is why I probably didn't go into academia. Do you know what I mean? That kind of negative side. You know, the downside of status and politics, right? Yeah, status. Politics, politics all that, that stuff. Mm -hmm. That's in the film, too. There's a little bit about that that part of yeah, I think I think his character does that as well as yeah. the other professor, the older man. Older that's right. Yeah. Um, who kind of reinforces uh, like gendered expectations yeah. in a really negative way. Like when he assume, you know, he makes some kind of comment about how Professor Hardy is probably just coming on to her and, you know, oh, yeah. yeah. Um, which he was, but he also admired her work. Um, it's both. Yeah. They have a real thing. I mean, they have a connection. Yeah, and they did it. Yeah, I mean. Illustrated the academic world accurately yeah. in the sense yeah, that yeah. the yeah. whole table was full of men. I don't think I saw any other women there, you know, yeah. at, the, at the dinner, the academic dinner. Yeah. Um, you know, it's still very much a, a boys yeah, club. I mean, when the, because that takes place in the early 80s, right? That would have been... Well, I think later, because she has a cell phone. Yes, but there's Lita. This is Lita in the past, so we have to understand those flashbacks is 20 years earlier. Yeah, but she has a cell phone in in past, oh, uh, too. But it's like a shitty old cell like phone. Like an old flip phone, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, yeah. What are you? Are you looking at your painting? Is this something oh, you want to show me? I'm like, <laughs> can I look at that? Is that something you're working on now? Oh yeah. Well, this day, I actually completed. Um, oh. Uh, several months look ago. At look at your baby crawling under that thing. Yeah. That's amazing. Look yeah. at that. What do you think about that? Look at that. Yeah, that's kind of what it was like when I made the painting. <laughs> Are those shoes or what's going on in that? It's like a, that's a, that's a different, looks like feet and legs and what? what yeah, is that? it's actually a pair of waders, which is what, um, oh. you know, cranberry farmers use in the, the, during the harvest in order to wade into the berry pools. Okay. Um, yeah, I actually, I have a pair right here. I can show you. Do you mind looking at it closer or is that? 
Oh, yeah, no, I can, yeah. So here's an example, though, of, of the... Oh. Of the boots. They're like these, you know, these like big rubber sprawls that are water. Is that, now, that, is this kind of like utility clothing? Would that be, yeah. Is that the kind of clothing that like you get at Dickies? Is that like a Dickies type thing? Probably. I don't know. I think more like at like Bass Pro Shops, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, it's kind of like uh, fishing, fishing gear. Look at that. But yeah, to me, it's very like cranberry specific. So okay. that's why it's part of this painting. And yeah, this uh, painting is. So, that, is so I'm trying to understand that's a woman, right? On top, right? Hold on, hold on. She's messing up one of my, <laughs> my drawings over here. This is kind of amazing. Yeah. This is really, this is very exciting. <laughs> hold on. We got a lot of Eddie. Come get her. I sort of, I sort of, I sort of feel like in this stream we're kind of seeing. It's actually, um, it's actually a um, what's the word? A um, it's actually kind of an honor to be in an artist studio like this. Oh, good. Yeah. And, and look, and this is kind of um. Look at it painting up close like that. Right. Also, <laughs> the baby of the painter. Right, right. That's yeah. kind of, Wipe that stuff off of her knees. It's, it's what's this, on her knees, paint? From this drawing that I have, okay. um, she kind of got all over it. It's like kind of dry erase marker. Right. Uh, oh, chalk marker. That's I was trying to. I was trying to take in that painting. There's two figures in the painting, right? Or is there? What is that? Oh, the one. Yeah, we. This one we actually, I think we talked about. Oh no, not, I'm talking about the newest one. Those okay. we talked about, the brand new one. Yeah, that one, that's the one we didn't, that's new, so. Um, yeah, it's just one figure, but she's, oh, one figure. she's putting on the waiters. The waiters, okay. Just, they're kind of like another skin, you know? That's right, but you know what that looks like? See that, doesn't that look like a, a head, but that, see that, um, Almost look like a, like a kind of a face or a head. Yeah, I mean that could be that. That's what oh, I right. I kind of wanted it to be. Like look like a goat or like a kind of an animal. Am I right about that? Oh yeah, I see that. Okay, I see that. That's so. What is that about, Alex? What do you? What's I mean? Not to put you on the spot, but that's a. What is that? Uh, so it's almost. What is that going on? Is she trying on something or what is? Yeah, it's or <laughs> she's maybe shedding it. Shedding it. Huh. Yeah, I mean, it's all about transformation. It's kind of like a, it's a pretty small moment though. There's not like a ton going on. I, I just, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, a lot of the work lately has to do with the actual physical feeling of being in this body right now, a body that just grew a baby and gave birth to it and, yeah. You know, what the act, because I think the thing that people don't talk about that much, mm. this is circling back to like motherhood, yeah. but people do not talk about the intense things that go on with the female body. Okay. They're becoming a mother. And, you know, whether that's like breastfeeding and all that mm. stuff, but also just like the, the aspect of recovery and, mm -hmm. um, you know, your, your body's kind of changed forever. And, and uh, so your life, yeah. you know, it's, it's such a, it's demarcated in this really physical way. Huh. And so a lot of the work is coming out of that lately. Um, just meditation. I sort, I sort of feel like, I mean, I, I feel like I've had a lot of lifetimes in this lifetime. And I feel like I've met a lot of different kinds of people. And so it's interesting. I'm just thinking it back when I, when I was in my early 20s. Yeah, when I was in my early 20s, um, I met, like, I met, a, I dated a woman briefly who had a two-year-old, which is kind of a weird thing to do when you're 22. Yeah. I didn't think that was weird. What was that like? Oh, I, I was crazy about her, I, I, but, but it was, 
But see, I, I live, see, here's what's weird about me. I don't live my life with a lot of preconceptions. I live my life more by instinct and just the moment, mm -hmm. which is actually kind of exciting, but it's also kind of weird because then you end up in situations where you're, the person you're dating will be a young mom, right? You know what I mean? Because I wasn't thinking, do you know what I mean? I'm like, I wasn't, I think most people, they, they kind of have a, a plan when they live. Mm -hmm. I don't live my life really with a lot of planning. And so a lot, I try to live without preconceptions. But what I'm saying is um, I'm now 54 and I'm thinking about that. And it's kind of like, and now you're talking about it. You're talking about the thing she was experiencing, right? In a way. But at, yeah. the, time I, but at the time, I didn't really think about that. She was just somebody I, I, I was dating, right? Does that weird, sound weird? So I don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think I think that way about everyone who has been a mother now. I, I, I It's like, oh, wow, they oh. all went through this and they didn't really talk about it or they didn't, you know, yeah. it doesn't show in a way. In, especially... Well, in in stark comparison to being pregnant where everything shows. Well, I think that this, you know, I knew this woman intimately, so I knew her body. Mm -hmm. and I was aware that her body, I found she was beautiful. But it, again, um, I guess, you know, I guess what I'm trying to say is um, she was who she was and it was part of life. And it's sort of like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I guess now we're talking about it. So I guess you can live something or experiencing it. But then when you talk about it the way we are now, that's a different way of looking at it, right? Mm -hmm. Does that make any sense? So it's sort of like, I don't know. Yeah. Well, I, and I mean, it, it, it's all about kind of bringing things to light too. And yeah, in the same way that the, the movie does as well. The movie does, but I'm just wondering if I can go back in time. I guess it would look different. It's like going back in time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess in a way what I'm saying philosophically is we go through changes because we were different ages, right? That person now is 70. Wow. And I talked to her on the phone last week. We had a very nice conversation. So oh, wow. that, see what I mean? So do you see what I'm saying? Like this is like she would have been 40 then. Now she's 70. And so what do you make of that? She's still the same person, right? Mm -hmm. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? The fact that the person has different stages like that. They're a mother and then they're... Yeah, it's something I actually talked to my mom about recently. And like, oh, yeah. well, my mother brings it up because what she is very concerned about is like sh her memory issues. And oh, you mean like 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 dementia or issues like that? Maybe, but also just like she's always noticed this about herself. She's like her memory is not that good, and oh. um, I don't think it's that bad. And okay. she thinks it's worse. And her mother had the same problem. And oh. um, like my okay. mom likes to rationalize it by saying like, but I think it's just because like I have the more life experiences I have, the less room in my brain. That's right. That's right. That's true. Though. But isn't that kind of normal? That, does that? The way, the way I agree with you, aren't you supposed to forget some things? Because there's a lot there, right? Yeah. I, I mean, mean it's, it's definitely normal. Yeah, you don't but, want to remember everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know. Is that kind of because there isn't room? You gotta right. I don't know. I watched this thing the other day. It was just a little. Um, news special about super agers and about super agers like vitamins like, or something it was like it's it was about these this group of women that their brain scans were just as good as young people's brains i guess and their their functioning is just right. as good and kind of what what their lifestyle looks like and it had all to do with kind of movement and uh healthy stress are you a big believer in that and like trying to be fit and kind of oh yeah big big i'm like functional movement is very important i think want to talk about that or to the audience or talk about what that is or is that too big a topic or 
it's a big topic, but oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, it goes along with all of my kind of my overarching um, lifestyle mantra has to do with paleo lifestyle. So oh, okay. kind of the way that we were evolved to live was to have a ton of movement and to have a certain type of like food. We didn't have agriculture. We haven't had agriculture around for a long time so actually like all the food that i eat is just it's paleo do you do a paleo diet? yeah it's just vegetables. Does you don't eat grain or does that mean no grain wow. no dairy no okay and are you pretty religious about it or strict about it or yeah i am because i've i've like my health improved so mm -hmm. much ever since i and does your does your family eat that way does your husband eat that way or... he does for the most part um Whenever we go out or like, you know, whenever I'm not in control of the meals, he, you know, he doesn't care that much, but even he has noticed like he's so much healthier now. Um, and even my baby for the most part eats pretty paleo, which is kind of like controversial in some ways, but we uh -huh. totally cleared it with our doctor with now, her controversial does, does that mean that pediatricians have debates about these things or they disagree or is that what that is or, or no i think it's just because um going back to social norms um people just can't believe that a baby can get enough calcium if they're not drinking milk or that a baby you know but if they're eating sardines every day they're getting plenty of calcium and but your 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 baby do you breastfeed or no, I wasn't able to. I think I'm it has to. to. Yeah, it had to do with the infertility. I think right. like, just my hormone balance. I don't know. Well, I did I'm everything that I could to try to make milk, but it just never came. So. So, but the but your your baby doesn't drink milk, right? Is dairy no dairy? Or no dairy. Milk? Yeah, and that's controversial, right? Because a, a lot of people think that's unnatural, right? Yeah, because because we yeah because we all grew up with no. like Drinking. milk. Yeah. So uh, it's, not, it's think... not that controversial. It's more just like my uh -huh. mom raises her eyebrows at every oh, sure. it, what you're doing dream decisions that I make, and yeah. so then I go to the pediatrician, and she says it's fine, and I'm okay. So, um, do you mind if I ask you more questions about that? So, how do you so I mean, you live in your own culture and you're, I'm sure you have support of other women, right? I guess you're obviously probably talk to women that believe as you do, right? I guess yeah. moms, how do you negotiate people that are outside of that group or, or have different views or how, I guess what I'm asking is how does everybody get along or not get along or is that too corny a question or too? No, no, no. Um, by common experience, by the things that you can talk about together okay. because you know, especially among like moms and stuff, like mm -hmm. there's just so much that everyone has to deal with. Everyone has to deal with um, poopy diapers and or right. or maybe not, because actually that's part of like my paleo thing is um, elimination communication, which is basically like infant potty training. Like none of us, oh, okay. were, none of us evolved to want to shit ourselves right. and to soil yeah. clothing. So right. Um, but in any case, like you're going to deal with poop either way. And do you mind so if I ask you a couple of questions about that? You, is that a place for that? Is it okay? Or yeah. you're comfortable with it? Yeah. Okay. Cause I don't know anything about it. So are you saying that your baby is going to be trained earlier than other babies or do you have a new system or explain or do you? Theoretically, yes, but it's not going well at the moment. <laughs> We're going through something called a potty pause where I okay. Like Sherby just doesn't want to go on the potty anymore. And she was okay. really good about it. Her first, like uh, most of her first year, she loved going on the potty. So I don't know what's going on, but yes, m like I have like right. a network of other EC mothers who uh, have done this. And yeah, a lot of them have kids that are potty trained way earlier because of it. And oh. it's, just, it's just more natural. Like it makes a lot of sense to me. And um, it just takes a little bit of it. Do you, do you want to, do you want to, since you're, you're on this episode, do you want to give an announcement or 
or, or talk about something to other moms? Or is there any, I mean, as a, I had. In what sense? Oh, in line with her comments. I think you two should talk, Laurie and um, Alex. Laurie, because Laurie says that she potty trains her dog. Oh, wow. I'm, I didn't see all these comments. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And actually, so that's what people really respond to when I tell them okay. what, what it is, is it's very much like a dog, right? Because you train dogs to not go in their kennel. Okay. Um, and they, cause wow. they don't want to, they don't want to be in their to. Yeah. yeah. So it's the same with kids and diapers. They, their natural inclination is not going to be to go in their diaper. Um, and so it was amazing. The day Sherby was born, we put her on top of the potty after her nap and she went in the potty. Oh. Like it was totally intuitive. Wow. Was totally, you know, like she held it during her sleep. Wow. Oh, in a diaper. Now, can I ask you a question? So are you saying that our society does it the wrong way? Because our society, does our society wait too long for that? Are yeah, you do it earlier? A that? lot. There's a lot of people who will tell you it's diaper companies. You know, it's all corporate. Okay. You know, actually, even 50 years ago, um, kids were out of diapers so much earlier because oh. the the oh. diapering um, companies were not like big yet, and everyone, most people, were still in cloth diapers. Huh. So you want to get your kids out of diapers way sooner if it's so inconvenient because you have to do tons oh. of laundry and. Um, so yeah, so but actually there's a large part of the world that still does it this way. Okay. Um, uh, third, you know, developing countries, yeah. I'm like, it, it's very common. Like when I brought it up to some people, yeah. they like, oh yeah, my friend is Chinese and she grew up. Yeah. That's normal there. I don't know about, again, I'm totally ignorant. But my theory is this. This is my podcast, it's Journey of an Esthete. And I sort of feel like this would be the place to talk about that, right? Because isn't it all connected? Yeah, totally. So isn't this connected to the issue of that painting behind you and what you're going to do with the painting? Yeah. You know I mean? is, that, is that too weird a thing to say? Or is that kind of, I don't know. Am I, am I right? Or what do you think about that? Is it too, I don't know. I think everything's always connected. And I think I think my my art life is definitely... Uh, it, each informs the other, right? Like my inclination for natural movement and um, and paleo eating is definitely not unrelated to the stuff that's going on in the work. I mean, uh, actually, in a lot, and and actually, in in work from kind of um, 2017. Uh, There's a lot going on over there. She's she's kind of she's yeah. She's trying to open the door, but also looking at the... Oh, wow. Hi. You know what, Alex? I think this is kind of an amazing episode. I'm happy. I'm so happy you brought your baby into Shelby into the... Into the good, good. Originally, you weren't going to do it. What made you change your mind? You're like, okay, let's... Um, I didn't. I didn't change my um, mind. She just, she just came in here. Okay. Yeah, and I just didn't know what her nap schedule would be today. Um... And, oh no, going back to the same page. Hey, 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 hey. Uh, we need to get off of that drawing. Sorry, oh, it's no. naked. But um, yeah, that's because like with EC, it's good for them to be naked because then they're oh. aware. But also, she's a hot baby. She hates being hot, so she's. May I ask you a question about California climate? Is that connected? Like, do you, you want to? Yeah, actually. It goes back to color too, right? Is Los like Angeles. In my podcast with you, we talked about how the the Finnish sunrises really, really um, impacted my palette, kind of made a That's palette right. like this piece. Yeah. You want to show so we know what you're talking about? Do you want yeah. to? Yeah. So, like, yeah. The sunrises were so um, intense and beautiful and orange. Yeah. And kind of red. Oh wow! Uh, yeah, that's that's yeah. That's kind of why this piece, yes, palette turned out like that. And so then I came oh, back to California, yeah. where the sunsets are the thing, right? Yeah. And we have beautiful sunsets here that are much more. Um, they're much more pink. 
Yeah. Like a, they're kind of like a cooler color. They're not as orange. <coughs> um, wow. And so I've done a, a few pieces recently. They're not here. They're actually in an installation right now in Irvine, California, um, that were kind of a similar similar palette to that, but more on the cooler um, cooler end to kind of reflect coming back to California. Yeah. Um, and I love that about living here. I mean, I, I love everything about the climate here. It's just absolutely, I mean. It is beautiful. You know, why, why do you think that people outside of Los Angeles County don't see its beauty? Is it just prejudice or they haven't experienced it for themselves or just. I think it's a difference too. You know, we grow up thinking of American beauty landscape as being more of the New England in the summer type landscape. Not necessarily. She's a wiggle worm. Let me. Is she wiggling now? Yeah, she's wig she wants out. Hold on. Okay. Ed, you come get her? See, this is my dream episode. This is what I wanted was to have to have a Alexandra Carter bring her baby to the episode to the stream. Right. Because I because that's the point of your artwork, right? It would have been it would have been yeah, exactly uh, complete. Is there anything you want to say uh, in conclusion or anything else you want to talk about or Shelby or your painting or the movie or anything? Um, kind of Sherby, by the way, it's Sherby. Yeah. She's named after my dad, Sherburn. Um, but yeah, I can't really, I can't really think of anything. Um, I'm excited though, because when I did bring up the, that I was having this conversation, to my postpartum support group today, um, they were saying, you know, hey. Oh, yeah, hey. There's, and there's Ed. Hi. <laughs> Amazing. Wow. <laughs> what a but great yeah. episode. Do they, did you want to talk about depression or postpartum depression at all for a few minutes? Since I don't feel like we, we I don't feel like we spent enough time on it just because it, it wasn't germane to the last episode. Yeah, I'm, I mean, no, we don't have to because I didn't have postpartum depression and I, I oh. don't have that much experience with it. But I know that that's kind of what um, I think a lot of people go through it and definitely people in my support group have gone through it. Through it. My support group is more like it's all encompassing postpartum experience. It's not just postpartum depression. So mm -hmm. it's... I mean, I think the thing I've come to realize that I didn't know before mm -hmm. is that postpartum is not, it's not just like postpartum depression. is not just something like that you might, it's not the only thing, right? There's so no. many other intense things that you, everyone's going to go through postpartum. Yeah like I was talking with the bodily experiences, but also just the mentality of, of your changing identity. Like you're becoming a completely new person in some ways. Um, and a, a completely new role. And it happens so fast, right? It's like the fastest transition I've ever experienced because, you know, I go from, from one moment I'm not a mother and to the next I am, and you have to hit the right. ground shaking. and sure. it's, it's just, and no matter how much help you have, you have to do so much of it yourself and having help is helpful, but it's like, mm -hmm. it's so much of it has to come. Well, to Alex, you. remember when we went out to that bar on Tremont street when you were 19, was it 19 or 20? How old were you? Yeah. You were 19. Yeah. Do you think it's weird that you're like the same person to me now? Is that kind of weird? I mean, I know you're different. Oh, you know, yeah, no, it's not weird at all. I think it makes it makes sense. Like I definitely stayed true to that person. Yeah. Huh. What do you think about the passage of time then to now and you're here in this art studio? It's kind of amazing, right? That you've been able to accomplish so much of what you wanted to accomplish. That's kind of great, right? Yeah, I'm very... Um, thankful for the way things have turned out and but I you know I remember like it, ever doubting that I would stop making work and other people around me like people I really like professors of mine would be like I'm not worried about you not making work I know that you're going to keep making work no matter what happens sure. and that's the kind of thing that I really um that really bolstered me 
really like just having that conviction mm -hmm. for sure. It's amazing, right? They were here and amidst everything going on in the world and war and pandemics and time passing. And, and we're here talking in, in video on this device. Isn't it kind of something? It's kind of a, it's kind of remarkable, right? It's beautiful. Yeah, it is. I think it's beautiful. And that's all I have to say for now. I think um, it's yeah. been a whole episode. Thank you for taking your time. The time. Yeah, to thank you. I loved this topic. So, yeah. and we'll meet again, I hope. And absolutely. And um, have a good weekend, Alex. And all Shirley. right. You too, Mitch. Thank Talk you. to you later. Thank you. Bye. Bye.